All righty. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. It's, uh, it's good to be back. Hopefully you can hear me. If you see me looking off to the side every now and again, it's not because I've seen something shiny. It's because I'm just paranoid about things not working, like mics not being turned on or anything like that. But listen, I've, I've really missed doing these. I really, really have. So to see already, you know, so many people joining is just wonderful. I've missed the interaction. Don't get me wrong, I love doing all the weekly YouTubes and they're going to continue. But I want to start throwing these in. And tonight was a bit of a tester because very soon, in just a few weeks, our internet is going to be getting a heck of a lot better. Uh, we're going to be going to almost one gig. So that's going to open up so many possibilities for what I want to do with the live stuff. So how it works tonight, I don't know. But by the sounds of it, it's all coming through nice and nice and clearly. So uh, great to see so much chat going on. There's some people in there that I definitely give a shout out to. Anthony Crothers, Brian Jukes, Tim Oliver as well. Check out his work. There's Deb, Stuart Wood. Tech, check out Stuart's stuff. He's got some amazing macro stuff. Loads of people. And my friend Steve Healy as well is there, as many, many others. But again, thank you for joining me. But tonight, what I want to do is, I don't know how long this is going to take. It didn't take that long, really. But what I want to do is go through how I recently did this picture. Okay, this is a picture that I took with my iPhone. But the fact that this is talking about something that I took with my iPhone, don't let that put you off. Because the process... Uh, that I'm kind of going to go through with the retouching is is kind of relevant whether you do it with a mobile device or a mirrorless or a DSLR. The editing is editing. How we capture it is one thing. How we edit it is pretty much the same kind of process. So that's what we're going to go through. So uh, by all means, use the chat for any questions that you've got. Stuart, um, uh, Anthony and Brian will be keeping an eye on those. And I'm sure at some point, if there's anything that's really kind of like a, a bit of a bit of a ooh -er kind of comment or question they'll let me know so we can cover those maybe as we go through it but more than likely at the end as well because what I want to do this video will be staying on the YouTube channel and I don't want it to be dragging on too long in the main body of it we can save the comments and stuff for the end of it but let's just dive into it then let me just show you first of all so I took I've taken it with my iPhone let me show you what I'm using to hold my iPhone first of all so we have wonders of technology let me just grab my iPhone here and there you go, we go live. So yeah, just to show you, this is live. There's me talking now. <laughs> right, so this here is the kit that I'm using. I've tried so many different holders to hold my uh, iPhone, and this is the best one that I've found so far. It's made by, as you, as you can see, it's Ulanzi. It is all metal, so it's really solid. And it's got a very, uh, there's a um, Arca Swiss clamp kind of base to it, so they can drop onto your tripod. But the actual swivel head here that holds it is all metal. And this black kind of dial at the end here will lock it into place. And then the red dial here will lock the clamps in place so your phone is nice and sturdy. Now, ordinarily, when you're kind of taking these, uh, you know, pictures with your iPhones, if you're doing landscape and the weather's nice, you don't need to worry too much about it being ridiculously sturdy. But a lot of the times that I take pictures, I want them to be dramatic. So it's going to be a lot of wind. And some of the stuff that I've used before, Although it might look sturdy, when you look at the phone as you're taking the picture, you can just see a little bit of movement, and obviously we don't want that. That one there, really, really cool. When it comes to the apps, um, the picture here, the most, uh, the longest part of the exposure on this one here was like one second, mainly taking them around about 0.5 seconds. Now, ordinarily, I would, you know, you could, you could do that with something like Lightroom, but there are other other apps that I use, and the one that I use for this is one called Re-Expose. Now this is mainly, well it is only for people who are iOS, but there are equivalent long exposure apps for any Android users. Great thing about this one here that I like is that fairly recently the guys who make this updated it so that it can shoot anything from 0.5 seconds all the way up to bulb mode. So you can keep the long exposure going as long as you as long as you want until you, you know, turn it to, tell it to turn it off. Now when I'm taking these kind of pictures here, it is a very, very dramatic scene when you're there. I love stormy weather. I really, really love it. Um, but I always found that when you take a single picture, it never captures the whole feeling, the emotion, the drama. So what I like to do is I take many, many pictures. I make sure that the actual phone or, or the mirrorless, if I'm using the camera for it, main camera, is locked in position. I focus on one particular area. With that app, I can just literally tap on an area midway into the picture then that's kind of locked for focus. And I'll just keep taking pictures every time I see a new wave move and the sea moves in a different way or some spray comes over. 
I'll keep taking a number of pictures. So what I end up with at the end of it is something like this here, as you can see in my Lightroom. If I just open these up, these here are generally all the kind of pictures that I took for this one single final image. So you can see here, every single one of them, there's something slightly different. You know, be it where the waves are coming over the cob at the back there, or the actual way the, the water's coming up onto the beachfront. Every single one of them's different. And what I tend to do then is, I will then get them into Lightroom Mobile so that I can then create an album and that album then syncs with my Lightroom Classic on my computer and then I'll mask them in. So the way that I do that is this. I then go to Lightroom Mobile. Once I've taken the pictures, the re-exposed pictures, they go into the camera roll on your iPhone. So I go to Lightroom Mobile, go to the albums and I create a new album. I then call that whatever, and you'll notice as I type this out, I think I called it Lime Regis Storm, you'll notice occasionally the OK button is greyed out, and that's because I've already got an album called that. So we'll keep on typing out until I can get a good, a nice blue OK button. So Lime Regis Storm, see, click OK, or tap OK rather, that album is then appearing in the list, as you can see just there. And if I want to add pictures from Lightroom, from my camera onto that, I can click on the icons in the bottom right, or from the album view, just tap on the three icons, the ellipsis, choose add photos from device, then that'll open up the camera roll and I can then just go through them, select the ones that I wanna bring in and then at the bottom where it says add, just use the add button and then that will bring them all back in then into Lightroom, uh, into Lightroom Mobile. That then syncs, that's the wonder of all this kind of um, technology, the way that the kind of all kind of talks to each other those are then that then creates an album in Lightroom classic it then syncs and all those pictures eventually then appear so that when I'm at home nice and comfortable I can then get on with the editing so just going back into my Lightroom here then let's have a dive into here you can see these are all the pictures now I'm not going to go through an edit of all of these images here what I've done is I've kind of narrowed it down so I'll do a slightly varied version of the picture but at least you see the process that's the main the main thing about this and actually while I'm going through this I've got a list of things here that I want to kind of go through I've been rehearsing you know practice practice these are the steps I want to go through so I can make sure I show them all to you but if I don't show it just somebody remember to tell me to do halo just remember halo that's really really important all right so let's dive in then let's have a quick look at the editing to see what kind of process that I went through now these images here, these are, the, these are the one, two, three, four, five, six that I've chosen that I'm gonna edit. And you'll notice now, as I just move through each of them, they look pretty sturdy, I'm steady rather. They look as if there's not much movement, even though it was really, really windy, but you can see a little bit of movement on that one. So that'll need to be sorted out in a minute. But I really like this image here because of the way that the, um, the way that the, the, the sort of the water's coming up onto the beachfront. I really quite like that. So I think I'm going to use this one here as my base image, which I'll then do some editing steps on and then sync that across all the other images before we then send them over into Photoshop. All right, so let's have a look then. First things we'll do, I'll go to the develop module and the first thing that kind of jumps out to me that I need to work on is the sky, okay? There is no kind of set pattern or routine, routine things that you must follow. When you're doing this, generally I start to work on the thing that jumps out at me first of all. So what I will do is this. I'm going to first of all go to the masking section, which is just incredible these days. It really is. And I'll click on sky. That will then make a select, uh, selection of the sky. If I just show, show overlay, you can see here now the red overlay. That's telling me now that the sky has been selected. There are some areas that I don't want to select. So we'll just go to subtract. I'll use a brush. And then very quickly, let's just remove it off some of these bottom areas down here very very quickly obviously what i'm going to be going through with you this evening is a fast forwarded version of what i would normally do when i'm sat here with a nice uh, cup of tea as i'm doing on me editing so we'll go to something like that let's turn that off there and all i'm going to do with this one here is i'm just going to go to uh, let's have a look here well i've got effects and we'll go to dehaze and i'll just dehaze this a little bit which i absolutely love but you do have to be careful with dehaze because if you use it too much it starts to bring in quite a lot of saturation so for now, I think I'm going to go to around about 35-ish, something like that. We will do more on the sky later, but for now, that's probably going to be enough. Let's come out of masking, and I'll just go through just some nice, simple, basic edits in here at the minute, just to bring out some detail. So let's just take down the highlights a touch, bring them down to there. I'll increase the shadows. Actually, while we're here, let me just try something. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in. Okay, there's a keyboard shortcut I've got on Mac for zooming in. Let me know if it works because it's very difficult. When I when I do it on here, both of my screens are actually zooming towards me. The actual stuff on there. So let me know in the comments when I do this zooming in if it kind of does zoom in for you and it works. So let me just try it now. I'm going to put my cursor over where the basics adjustments are and I'm going to zoom in. Okay, and then I'll zoom back out again. So let me know in the comments whether or not that works. I've never known if that works or if I'm saying I'll zoom in and people just kind of let, let it go because I don't really. Anyway, I'll carry, I'll carry it. I'll keep an eye out on the comments to see if it does say that and if it does, then I can continue doing it. But let's just bring up some detail in the shadows. And then we'll go to bring the whites. I've got the whites there. Yeah, I'll keep those at 15-ish, something like that. Okay, Paul Roberts, Sean Bourne, brilliant. Okay, that's fantastic. I didn't know whether or not it did, so thank you for letting me know. I won't bother doing that again. So obviously that's the only kind of downer, if you like, about doing this ordinarily with a with a pre-record. I'd zoom in and zoom out and red arrows and stuff, but you know, we, we, we're live. We have to sacrifice something, I guess. All right, so just carrying on then with this uh, editing here, just a few little uh, adjustments I want to make. I'll increase the clarity a little bit, and let's have a look here. Let's just press the backslash key and go before and after there, just to see. Already, just a few minor adjustments, and you can see already we're starting to get some stuff coming in. All right, so now then, let's just quickly straighten this up. So we'll go to the crop tool there. Now you could press on the auto, but what I tend to find with this is when there are other kind of straight areas within the image, it can kind of be a bit of hit or miss whether or not it does straighten it correctly. So I'm just gonna use the uh, ruler here. If I click on that, we'll go to the horizon line over on the left, and I'll drag it out and then drag to another part of the horizon line and let go there. So that has now straightened that up for us. Perfect. Right, let's do again, before and after, before and after. Right, now that one's done, I've got that, that one there's got three stars, so we know what that's going to be. In fact, what number is that picture? Because this one here is what I'm going to build everything on top of. That one you can see down the bottom here is number 12-35. Right, so now that we've kind of uh, worked on the one image, I'm now going to sync all of those settings across the others. So with this one here, the main one that I've just retouched is a kind of highlighted. Hold on the shift key, we'll go to the far left and tap on them all. And you can see they're all highlighted, but it's not quite as prominent as the lead image just here. We'll then go to sync settings. Now when you do that, bizarrely, the masking is always missed out. I have no idea why that is. There must be a reason for it. But make sure that you do tick masking to include that sky mask. That is obviously very, very important. So we'll click on synchronize, doesn't take long, there's only six images there and you'll see now you'll eventually start to see all those edits pop in one by one as Lightroom applies all that we've done so far to each of them. There you go, nice and quick, nice and simple. Now that we've done that, the next thing we're going to do is now send this over into Photoshop because we've kind of come to a point in the retouch where I can't do what I need to do in Lightroom because obviously we don't have layers and stuff like that. I'm going to... Um, going to go over to Photoshop. Sorry, I was just distracted then by something in the comments. But uh, this is what we'll do. We'll just kind of send this now into Photoshop. But I'm going to use Photoshop Beta, the beta version. If you haven't got it, make sure you get it. It's there to be used and played with. Let's have a quick go. So now that all highlighted, remember this one here is the one that's the one that the lead image and that was number 12-35. We'll then go to Photo, Edit In and Open as Layers in Photoshop. All right. So that's going to say, do you want to use Photoshop Beta? Because I've got obviously both versions on there. We'll click that to do that. And eventually, if I now just zoom into Photoshop, there you can see they're all now bringing these images in, which is real, really cool. The way it does it now, it brings them all in. It's a real time saver rather than me opening them up, dragging one on top of the other, or do file and place. It gets does all that for me, which is wonderful. And in fact, there you go. It doesn't take long to bring all those in. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at what we've got. If I just turn off all of the layers except for the very bottom one and then just move through. And now you'll start to see as I go through, it's really obvious if there's any movement in those shots. And you can see there is. There's a little bit of movement. Not so much in these top three, but if I go to here, then here you can see it kind of skips around a bit. So obviously now we need to... Um, line these all, all these images up now incidentally do you remember i mentioned about the the image that i first of all worked on the base image was number 12-35 now i appreciate you can't zoom in but if you could see the layers panel 
because that's the one that I first of all clicked on and then held the shift key down and highlighted the other ones, when I then sent it to Photoshop and then uh, add into layers, that one that I first of all highlighted is the one that is automatically placed at the bottom. So that is really, really handy. All right, so now that we've got that then, this is the, we're going to make sure we line all these up. So I'll click on the bottom image, hold the shift key down and top, click on the top image so they're all now highlighted and then just go to edit and auto align layers. Now there's lots of settings in here, but I'm just gonna leave it at the default and we'll just, uh, where it says auto and then just click okay. Doesn't take long. In fact, there you go, it's done. Wasn't even time to have a quick slurp of water there. Now you can see it's then moved them all around. If I now go back to the base image and turn them all off, look now, we'll keep an eye on this area here. If I just zoom in, you should see now that it's pretty steady. So that does a fantastic job of lining all of those images. Really, really good job. Okay, now then, the next process, this is the fun part. This is the bit where I feel a bit Bob Ross. Those who remember Bob Ross, my wife watches him every single week now, they're doing all the replays, the joy of painting. This is when I start to feel like a bit of an artist because now I start to bring in the bits that I want to create the picture that I want to end up with. And I love doing this, I absolutely love it. And this is how I do it. First of all, let's just crop out the bits that we don't need. So I'll zoom in, we'll get the crop tool. I'm gonna to drag over to that bit just there so we can get rid of that transparent area. The bit at the bottom needs to come up as well. Bit over on the left and bring the top down as well to around about there. And there you go. So there we go, there's our start image. So what I will do now is I will start to go through each of these layers and bring in the bits that I want from each. And I can just take my time doing this. I don't need to rush. I'll just, there just might be some really little small thing on one layer that I think I'll add that. And then the next one, I'll add that and so on and so on. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at this first layer just here. Uh, what could we grab off this one? Well, I might want to have this little bit right down the end where this wave is crashing over. And I quite like this bit down here as well, but I might save that just for a second. What on this one here? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm liking that. All right, okay, I think what I'm gonna do with this one is bring in these two where the waves are really crashing over. So what I'll do, let me just, first of all, I'm gonna get this base image, right click on it, and I'm gonna label it green. So I know for definite, if it, just in case something moves, I know that is my base image. And this one here is the one that I'm gonna now put down, first of all, I'm gonna work on this one. And I'll drag this to the bottom. Now I can do that either by using the move tool, clicking and dragging, physically dragging that layer, or, just hold down the command or control key if you're Mac or Windows, and then the le uh, left or right square bracket keys, and that will physically move layers up and down the layer stack. So I'll do that now. So if you just if I hold down the command key, and then I'll use the left square bracket key, and you can see it jumps it down. So that's really, really handy way of moving layers about. So I'm gonna go for bringing in this bit over here. So what I'll do then with that layer, I'll add a layer mask, put a black layer mask. So I'll hold down the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows and add the layer mask. It hides the contents. I then get a brush with a white foreground color in the toolbar and I'll just make sure that brush is 0% hardness, nice and soft. All right, and then I'll zoom in and then this is the Bob Ross bit. This is when I start to paint just some of this stuff in here. And like I say, I do this because I don't find that a, a single shot really gives me what it felt like when I was actually there. You know, you can either capture one decent wave or one decent bit of water coming up onto the beach, but never all of it, I never feel. So that's why I do this. Right, so that's that just there then. So already we've gone from there to there. Cool, let's just now have a look at the other layers, see what we've got. Uh, I'm not too sure. Oh yeah, I'll save that one. I'm gonna save that one till the very end. What's this one here? Oh, there you go, look at that. Look at this water coming over here. We've got to add that in. Right, so again, I'll click on that layer. I'll bring that command or uh, command or control key, left square bracket key, and just bring it down once. That's the next one in the layer stack. And I'm definitely gonna bring in this bit here. So I'll hold down the option alt key, add a black layer mask, and then carefully just brush that in. Now you can if you want to, if you want to, if you're kind of like painting blind here, you don't really know what you're doing, you could double click on that layer mask and then go to the density. And if I re reduce the density, what that's gonna do is it's gonna make the mask here change from black through different tones of gray all the way back to white. So you start to be able to see through that layer mask. So you can kind of use that to see where you can paint without affecting the other stuff. So I, you can see there, that's all the way up. And if I bring it all the way down, 
that's just that. So I'm going to bring it to about there. So now I know I can paint on to bring these bits in. Here we go. Because I don't want to get rid of these bits that I've already painted in where we've got the waves crashing over the top. Let me just zoom in a bit more. Again, like I said, this is working at warp speed just so I don't keep you folks waiting. But it gives you the idea of the process that I go through when I'm actually creating these kind of pictures. And this is coming from somebody who isn't really a landscape or seascape photographer. It's just, you know, this is something that I've started doing ever since COVID. Um, but I just love getting out with the phone. I really do love getting out with the phone. I love the fact that I haven't got to carry much stuff around with me. And, you know, it's just good fun. Oh, I don't know about that bit there. Let's just get rid of that. This is Bob Rossi bit here. All right, so I'll just go for something like there. I might even get rid of that just there. Okay, let's have a look what that gives us. Let's just bring up the density back to where it was. Okay, something like that. I might bring a little bit more down the bottom. Oops, the bottom on here. There we go. Look at that. Love it. Look at that. Yeah, much more dramatic. Oh. <laughs> the great thing I love about this is when you're blending waves together, nobody can ever say to you, well, the wave wouldn't look like that. Because waves do what waves do. Nobody knows there's no kind of uniformity or pattern to them. They just do what they do. So you can blend them together. As long as you blend them well, nobody's none the wiser. So, All right. Sean, I can see that you've got a, a comment there. I'll sh we will get to those in, in a short while. But I'm just going to go through this process just quickly to show you this here. Now, I have kind of rushed that a little bit. Let's just tidy this up just a touch. Uh, just to paint that in at the top. There we go. All right, something like that. Now, this this here is the halo thing I wanted to tell you about, which we'll sort out afterwards. All right, let's have a look at some more layers. Let's just zoom out. What's that one got? Yeah, let's add that bit in at the back just here, this big wave coming over. So again, a layer mask, get a brush, white foreground color, nice soft brush, and we'll just gently brush that in like so. In fact, that's gonna really blend in with this other wave here, so I might actually get rid of that one. I prefer this really big dramatic one just here. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> Love it. It was so much fun being there when this was like this. It really was. I was having to really hold on to the phone as I was phoning the tripod as I was taking these shots, really hoping that they were going to be nice and uh, nice and sharp. But as luck would have it, they were. So anything else on that layer that I need to bring in? No. All right, okay. Let's have a look at this one. Oh yes, this bit down the front here. I like. Oh, and also this bit at the back. All right, okay, let's just bring that in. Only this layer and one more to go. So black layer mass, let's get a brush, white brush, and I'm just gonna blend a bit more down here. There we go, let's bring that in. Something like that maybe. There you go, that looks nice. Something like that. And what was that down the bottom there? Was there something down the bottom? Oh yeah, all that water coming over the end just there, lovely. <clears throat> let's have some of that. There we go, look at this. Now, if anybody's ever been here, they'll know that for this water to be coming over what they call the cob, the way it is in this picture here, you know that this was one heck of a storm because this is a really high cob, really, really high cob. So the waves were really being, they were pounding, it really were such a lot of fun. Makes you feel like a kid again when you're, when you're in the thick of it. All right, something like that will do for now. So you get that kind of idea. Just quickly saw that, Jill Davis, how did you label the base image green? Jill, very quickly, all you do when you put your cursor over any of the layers here, if you just right click down at the bottom, you've got a number of different colors that you can choose from. That's one way that you can do it. All right, so let's have a look, last layer, and we're gonna move on. So anything on, oh yeah, this bit here, there we go. Yeah, I've got to have all this water coming off here. So we'll add another black layer mask, get a brush, and then just finish off by bringing in all that drama on this bit as well. Look, I love this. And this is all kind of like half a second exposure, one second in some parts, but mainly half a second, but it really does create a lot of drama. In fact, I don't wanna get rid of too much of that on there. Something like that will be fine. All right, okay, let's have a look. Let's just zoom out to here for a second. I appreciate, we don't need to see much of the sky there, do we? Just so that you folks can see it. If I turn off that base, everything except the base layer, very quickly you can see how you can go from, you know, what was still quite, you know, dramatic to then bring in all those other elements that you remember when you were there. 
so it makes it uh, so it makes it one picture containing all the drama. That's how I see it. There might be purists out there that wouldn't agree with me, but I couldn't care. I really couldn't care. This is what I want to create. So right now that we've done that, let's have a look at my uh, little sheet that I need to make sure that we're doing. Right, so we've done the masking. The next thing I want to do now. This is why I'm using. The, the beta version of Photoshop, because there's something in here that I want to remove that ordinarily could be quite a challenge. But you'll see now, he says, hoping it'll work, how amazing this is at getting removed now using Generative Fill AI in Photoshop beta. All right, so let me just show you this. Uh, I want to get rid of this here, these bollards, because people are no longer allowed on the cob because there's quite a serious uh, cut or uh, slice that's appeared in it through storm damage. But you know it doesn't really look nice on the picture. So what I'll do is I'm going to create a merged layer at the top of the layer stack, holding the Shift Option Command and E or Shift Alt Control and E keys, and then I'm going to make a selection uh, of this area just here. So I'm going to get the uh, Polygonal Lasso tool. You could use any selection tool you want, but I quite like using the Polygonal Lasso tool. It's like using an elastic band as it goes around it. So I'm just going to go around this area here. Not nice and tight up onto it. I'll leave a little bit of a gap around it because when you're using generative fill, you do want to leave just a little bit of breathing space so that it knows what the surrounding areas are that you want it to kind of blend it all into. So we'll go, we'll include the bollards, the poles, and also that danger sign just there as well. And just coming close, go right across that bit, go across this bit, down, down up there and then almost to the end let's have a look so just there so now we've got our selection we've got the generative fill um, taskbar just down here I'll click on generative fill I'm not going to put any text prompts in whatsoever I'm just going to click on generate now your guess is as good as mine what's going to happen now because every time you use this it'll give you a slightly different result so fingers crossed it gives us something worthwhile so it only takes roughly 15 seconds. This isn't dependent on how powerful your computer is because it just goes up to the cloud and then comes back down again. And Tim, I totally agree with you. Uh, yes, it really is mad science, completely mad science. But if we just look over now then in Photoshop beta, let's have a look here. You can see it's added something odd in there. Uh, that's a pretty good job. These are really decaying steps anyway. So that's done a really, really good job. But let's just try it again. Let's just click on generate. We've got no, you know, nothing to worry about with time here. It takes about 15 seconds, like I say. It will throw back another three variations just to see what that's going to give us to make it maybe look even better. Who knows? But uh, I don't know what's doing on the wall there, but let's have a look. That That's looking pretty good. Don't like that one. Do you know what? I actually think I like... I'm going to go with that one there, maybe. <laughs> Something like that. It looks okay, all right? That looks okay for me. Again, it's just to show you the kind of stuff that we can do nowadays with this here. So that's that. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is, right, okay, I want to show you something I did with the sky here. This is something that I really like to do with the sky uh, to make that a little bit more dramatic because there were loads of clouds. You know, the wind was quite strong, but at 0.5 seconds or one second, you're not going to get much kind of drama apart from what clouds you've got in the sky. So I want to add a little bit of movement in there, and this is how I do it. So again, I'm going to, um, I just see Stephen there has just put, why didn't you use content aware fill? It ain't gonna work. Content aware fill just isn't gonna work on something like that, Steve, because it's basically, it's got to, um, it's got to remake the steps, you know, and yeah. I think the days of content aware fill are numbered. I really do. Right, anyway, anyway, let's have a look at the sky here. First of all then, I need to create another merged layer at the top of the layer stack. In fact, I can get rid of one here, so keep the file size down. I don't need this one, let's just get rid of that. I'll create a merged layer at the top of the layer stack and then we'll go to select and choose sky. And eventually it makes a selection. You can see it there, if I just press Q on the quick mask, you can see there the red overlay that we can see is the sky. Now, the first time I made a selection of the sky, I wasn't overly fussed about how far down it came. Obviously, I took it off the sea and the wall, but I didn't. I wasn't bothered about the fact that it touched along the top line here. For this effect here, I do need to remove it off that. So what I'll do is I'm going to get a brush, <clears throat> and I'm going to use this now to brush away the uh, area where it's coming near to the horizon line. Now there's a bit of distant kind of hills and mountains over there, so we'll get it off that. 
and I'm going to brush it off this. I know there's a uh, wave coming in just there. Let's just brush it off this and I'll brush it off the remainder. It's just shift click. There you go. So it does all that. So now you can see that that selection is no longer touching the horizon line. Now that we've got that, I need to put this selected area up onto its own layer. And I do that by holding down the command key on Mac, control key on Windows and pressing J and it jumps it up onto its own layer. Then what I'm going to do is go to filter and choose convert for smart filters. Now the reason I'm doing this is because you can be tempted sometimes to use too much when you're using a filter, too high a setting. And if you haven't used a um, smart object, you're stuffed, you've got to redo some work. With this, it allows you the flexibility to dive back in to change settings to fine tune it to how you want it to be. So now that we've got that, I'll go to filter and we'll choose blur. And we're going to go to this one here, radial blur. Again, this is going to be really small. I'm sorry, I can't zoom in. But have a look at this when you're uh, on your own computers. You'll know which I'm talking about. It's the radial blur filter. I'm going to put it into best setting. And by default, it's set to zoom. And you can see here when I use the amount, you can see it's kind of zooming in. Now, ordinarily, it would be like this because I've just not long been using it when I was practicing for this evening. It would be like this. So you can see that as I do the zoom, that kind of zooming there is kind of coming into the middle from all the, all around this square. All of it is zooming right into the middle. And I don't want that. I want it to zoom as if it's coming from the horizon line. So it's going over the top of me. So what I can do here is in the middle of this dialog box just here, I can click in the middle where we've got the crosshair and drag it downwards right to the very bottom. So now can you see, hopefully, how this is uh, zooming from the bottom upwards. OK, and that's exactly what we want. I'm only going to use a small amount here. We'll go for around about sort of five or six, something like that. Uh, let's go for six and we'll click OK. And there we go. So now look, it's very, very subtle. But if I just zoom in on the sky, this is before, after, before and after. So there's just a little bit of movement in that sky, which is what we want. Right. Last thing we'll do in Photoshop before we go back to finish off in Lightroom is this is personal choice, but something I like to do. It's almost like a bit of a signature thing for me. When I've been taking uh, pictures with my phone in a storm, invariably, invariably by the coast, you get all the gulls flying around. I'll then just put it into the normal iPhone camera and I'll snap away to get loads of different pictures of the gulls just to keep them for future use. So this is what I do with those. Let me just now go to File and Open. I'll go to my desktop. We've got a YouTube folder and here. Here's a... Uh, picture that I took just quickly of the gulls all flying around being blown around in the uh, in the wind there so what I will do is make a selection of like these three just down here let me get the lasso tool I'll use the regular lasso tool and I'll make a selection around these ones just here okay then I'll copy that I'll um, jump that onto its own layer command or control and J I'll get my move tool and then drag that you can see now I'm moving it put that over into my main picture just here let's zoom in i'll get my transform and resize it let's just get it nice and small so they're distant birds being blown around in the in the storm just there that's fine uh, okay now we need to kind of get rid of all the darker sky around these so i'm not going to make a selection i'm just going to go to the layer that contains the birds double click on it to bring up the layer style dialog box and in the middle here, we have the blended sliders, current and underlying. We're going to use the current layer, which is the layer which these birds are on. We've got the darks on the left and the lights on the right. I want to make the lightest parts of this layer here, because the dark parts is the birds. I want to make the lightest parts disappear. So I'm going to click on the far right and slowly drag it over. And look, as I move that, look what happens to the sky around those gulls. Eventually, just disappears. Now you can, if you want to, hold down the Option or Alt key and split this little marker in two. But you have to be careful. If you soften it too much when you separate the two points, you start to bring back some of the original sky. So I don't need to worry about doing that too much with this one. We'll go for something like that and then click OK. I always like to just add a little bit of blur to these. So 0 0.5 on the, let's go 0 0.5 on the radius there. And then I'll just lower the opacity to maybe something like 70. So it blends them into the sky just a little bit. Let's just zoom out. All right. So that is now what we've got. We need to go into Lightroom just very quickly to finish off. But look, just by doing a little bit of masking, 
few little things with uh, generative fill, which, you know, if you weren't doing this live and chatting away, you'd just be able to do that. Nice and pleasant, take your time. But you can see here where we've gone, we have literally gone from something like that to something like that. All right, so yeah, very, very happy with that one. All right, let's now just come up here and, right, we'll save it. Now, this is something I wanna mention. When we first of all bring images in using Lightroom Mobile, we then come into Lightroom Classic. They're in a folder, an album, which is still synced with Lightroom Mobile, okay? Now, if I then send that image to Photoshop and I work on it on my desktop, if I then save it, that's then gonna save back into the folder that is synced with Lightroom Mobile. I'm not gonna have like a hard copy, if you like, on my computer for safekeeping. So I, this is only personal choice, but this is something that I, oh, Halo, yes, we're nearly there. Dave, you're a legend, thank you. Remind me again though in a minute. So what I tend to do is this, I will now save the file, rather than just going command control to save it, I will physically save it on my computer, my, my hard drive on my desktop, rather than leaving it up in the cloud, all right? So let me show you. So now what I'll do then, I will go to File, Save As, and I'll navigate to the folder where I keep all of my uh, Lightroom images. So you can see all my folder structure here, 2023. I've got a folder for 2023 called Lime Regis because I've been down there quite a bit. And I'll just give this a name. Let's have a look here. We'll call this one just something nice and simple. I'll call it YTL for YouTube Live. Keep it as a TIFF, embed the profile just there, and then click on Save. I won't compress it, and we'll just click OK. So bottom left, you can see that zipped along to say it's saved. So now if I dive back over into Lightroom, and I go to my normal folders now, not the ones that are synced with the cloud, but up here where my 2023 folder is and my Lime Regis, now here. This is the one, this is the one that's highlighted, is the one we've just worked on. And again, I know you can't see it because we're about to zoom in at the bottom bit down here, ytl.tiff. So this is the one that we worked on. All right, we're nearly at the point of Halo. I've just seen that Anthony's <laughs> reminded me as well, and Brian, thank you very much. All right, so, uh, okay, editing this, finishing this one off. Over on my presets on the left-hand side, I love presets. I absolutely love them. There's one here I used for this image. And it's called, I've called it Sunny Day at Lime. You can see there, look, that's before, that's after. Before and after. Now, what I'm thinking is I'm, I'm going to make this preset available. Uh, I'll send it out on my newsletter. So if anybody subscribes to my newsletter, I'll send this preset out into it as well because I use it so much, it's so, so good. The great thing I love about presets is that when they come in, you've got all the settings that we use to create that preset. So if it doesn't quite suit that image, you can still tweak it, all right? So I think there's a little bit too much clarity, so I'll just reduce the clarity a little bit. And let's have a look, actually apart from that highlight, I might bring down the whites just up in the sky, maybe in a little bit, but well, we'll have a think, we'll have a think. Um, all right, so. What else do I want to do on this? Well, I think this area down here, these pebbles is distracting me. So I'm gonna to go to the masking. I'll get a brush and we'll go to the tone section and just bring down the exposure. That's all we wanna use is exposure. And I'm just gonna, Stuart Wood, Halo. I haven't forgotten, I don't think so anyway. Uh, let's just bring this down here. I find this just a little bit distracting. We don't need to take it out totally, but just to bring that down just around about there. And then one thing I love to do with these images, when you've got all the waves and, the, and all the foam and all that kind of stuff is, is increase the whites to really draw people into them. So I'm gonna create a new mask. Again, I'm gonna get a brush. I'll go into the tone section and the only one I wanna use is the whites. So I'll just gradually increase the whites just a little bit. Let me just turn on the overlay so you can see where I'm gonna be brushing. So this is the area here. And the great thing is, because I'm only using the white slider, it's only, although I'm painting quite loosely here, it is only gonna affect the areas that contain white within this overlay where I'm brushing just now. And you'll see the difference. This just really draws the eyes in. It gives a little bit more contrast to it as well. So something like that. Let's just turn off the overlay. And now look, much more drama, much more contrast in those waves and the, the foam and stuff. I love doing that. I absolutely love it. All right, so we'll go for something around about there. Last thing I'm gonna do, and then I'll do Halo, all right? Then I will do Halo, because I think it will be needed. And um, when I say Halo, I mean this here. If I just go zoom in at 200%, can, you might see it. In fact, can I go even closer? Let's see if I can go to 300%. 
you can just see above this where you've got very very defined lines i'm finding this with all pictures that i take with my mobile phone especially when i'm editing them afterwards when i've had any kind of clarity you're going to get a tiny little bit of a halo going across the top here so i do have to sort that out pretty much on every single image that i work on it doesn't take long and i'll show you how i do that but it's just something to bear in mind because if you don't zoom in you miss these things let me just uh, crop this i am going to do this as a one by one sometimes i might leave this until the very very end but this kind of is the end but i still want to show you the um the halo -y bit so i'll crop it to around about say there looks good i like this drama in the bottom here dry yeah like that yeah cool i might just have let's just add one more mask actually before i go over to photoshop to sort the halo out linear gradient let's just drag down in the sky just there and i don't want any tonal adjustments but i will just go to the dehaze just a little bit more there we go a little bit more drama just there i don't want to add a um, a vignette into this i find vignettes i tend to avoid them if i can because they do look a bit i don't know a bit fake if you like um all right so that's that bit there right last thing i'll do then let's get rid of the halo a few people have reminded me i need to get rid of the halo so let's just do that so i'm just gonna press command or control and e it's gonna say uh, do you want to send it into photoshop beta i'll say yes we'll send a copy edit oh i need to close this one first here let's just get rid of all those bits just there there we go uh, let's go back to lightroom just briefly right let's do that again let's just send it over into photoshop it wouldn't open it because it's going to be trying to open the same image with the same name so i needed to close that all right so let's just get rid of the halo -y bit then this is just one way that i do it i'm going to rotate this now this is kind of like using if you've heard of um uh, wacom cintiqs or there's the new sense labs 24 pen 24 inch pen display where you can rotate them you can articulate them so that you it's more comfortable when you're working on them to sort of get different angles you can kind of do that within photoshop as well without having one of those so i kind of use that use that quite a lot and you do that by using the rotate tool in the toolbar you press r which obviously means rotate tool and you can turn it around like this all right so i'm going to go to around about there because i don't know why but being left-handed that seems to work better for me if i have it upside down around about there all right uh, i'll add a new layer and i'm going to get the crop the um, clone stamp tool making sure that in the top here in the options bar it says current and below because i'm working on a transparent layer and all i'm going to do is i really hope you can see this the way this is going to work but i'm going to hold down the option key or alt key to sample an area just above literally just above the halo and then i can use that see how i'm just getting rid of it just there now it take ages to physically do that but what i can do is if i hold down take a sample just above the halo and then kind of go there brush away a little bit then i hold down the shift key and move my key a little bit further along it'll take samples all the area along and just fill it in underneath so now i've done that i can just bosh bosh there we go all the way along now so it's going to keep on sampling even though i'm not necessarily clicking to sample it will keep on sampling as it kind of moves along the line so that i can remove that halo much quicker so i'm going all the way along hold the shift key down and click and it'll join it together shift key click and i can just now use the space bar to very quickly move along the image to get rid of all of it so whatever is above that area of the halo is what it's actually sampling as i move along to get rid of the halo all right so very quickly do that and all that that lead up to this halo thing you're probably not that impressed by it but i just find it a really quick and easy way of getting the really getting rid of the halos which seems to happen like i said quite a lot when i'm working on images that i've uh, taken with my phone but particularly when i've used some kind of clarity to kind of boost the boost them up all right so when you've got the rotate tool if you want to get your image back to normal just come over to the toolbar and double click on the icon and it will then level the image up just there like that let's just flatten that and the very last thing i will do the very very last thing i'll do is i'm going to give it not an autumn effect but it's a little bit of a dreamy glow only a little bit this is something i do on every single black and white image in fact any image that's a seascape or a landscape be they color or in black and white okay so let's just do that now i will then go to filter blur 
and Gaussian blur. Now the amount of Gaussian blur I add in here generally relates to the size of the uh, pixels or the, the sensor that you are using. Now this is a 12 megapixel Bayer RAW. Okay, it's a long exposure taken with re-expose and it, it, does, it doesn't do it in like the 48 megapixel quad Bayer, whatever you call it with iPhone. This is a 12 megapixel file, which you know, you might think only 12 megapixels, but I did get one printed by Digital Apps at 72 inches and it looked incredible, absolutely incredible. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put in 12 as the radius for Gaussian blur, click OK. You can see it goes blurry, then change the blend mode there to soft light and then take it down to around about 40%. So and that's before, after, before and after. So it just gives it a little bit of a kick. So there you go. 45 minutes. My God, didn't expect it to be that long. Wow. Okay. <laughs> relatively, uh, relatively pain free as well. So that's it. That's what I wanted to show you. So let's have a look. If there's any questions here, um, I can edit this video once it's gone um, as a recorded version on YouTube. So I can crop out bits at the front and the end. But let's have a quick look. I don't know if Brian Anthony, if there's anything uh, there that really kind of stood out. I'd try to keep an eye out. Uh, Tim, let's have a look here what Tim has put. Anyone who hasn't watched Glenn's tips on portrait. Oh, I've got to get rid of that one. But thank you. <laughs> thank you, mate. Uh, could the halo be removed earlier in the process? That's a, that's a, oops. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, where we go? Let's have a look here. Greg, Mac Greg McMillan. Brilliant. Good old Greg McMillan. Again, somebody who, or somebody who's made brilliant pictures with his iPhone. Really, really cool guy. So check out Greg as well. But Greg says, could the uh, halo be removed earlier in the process? Um, do you know what? You, I guess it could. Uh, but the trouble is, the more the more I do, the more chance it is it's going to kind of add to it. So I tend to leave it right to the very, very end. And it's only really, I only really notice it, Greg, when it comes to I've done the black and white conversion. Because then obviously with that halo being quite bright, it really stands out. So I tend to do it right towards the very, very end is, uh, is my answer, is my answer there. Uh, superb, thank you, Tony. Thank you very much, mate. I really appreciate that. That's very kind of you. Uh, Deb, always good to see that you're there. That's really kind of you. Thank you very much. Alexander, so any questions, please go back to Sean's question, Glenn. Okay, let's have a quick look up here. Sean, 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 presets. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Right, so was it quite a long way back? I can't really see, can't seem to see it at the minute. Oh, Sean. Okay, so okay, is this the one here? This could be the one. Could you leave the mask white and paint out the bits you want, then invert the mask? Absolutely, you could. You you totally could. Um, I, I don't tend to do that because it's only a small amount on that mask that I'm actually bringing in. If it was going to be a lot that I was bringing on that mask, then yeah, I'd do that because then the other one's only got a little bit on, the layer underneath has only got a bit on that I'm got, I've got to worry about. But when there's only small amounts on a layer, I tend to use a black mask. But Sean, completely. That's a great thing about all this, isn't it? That, you know, we can we can do things however we want to do them. You know, it's uh, as long as we end up with the same result, that's that's all that matters. When I when I first kind of, when I was a young kid, I left school, I was a labourer on a building site with a plasterer. And he taught me how to do plastering in the house, to do the walls. Now, he had to trowel. And he would start at the bottom with his mix and he'd go up, down, up, and then move along the wall, up, down, up, up, down, up. Now, when I did it, for some reason, I like to go down, up, down, down, up, down. We both got the same result. Doesn't really matter. It's the tools, it's how you use them, as long as you get the same result. That's all it is to it. Um, cool. Oh, that's funny. What is that with uh, Tim Oliver? So can we call this the joy of Glynn? <laughs> <laughs> my wife's only next door i doubt she'd say that <laughs> but hey i really really hope that's been useful i've really i mean i love doing all this kind of stuff these these pictures here i'm thoroughly enjoying doing all this uh iphone photography i've not stopped using my main my main camera in fact talking my main camera i've got a great portrait coming up in wales in pembrokeshire an on location portrait so anthony brian maybe we should speak because it's uh it's going to be a good one really really good one some of you you've never met either. But folks, before I disappear, uh, don't forget, these are the apps that I use. This is the app that I use, Reexpose. Uh, wonderful app for doing long exposure. They've also got one called Reheld, which is where you can do handheld long exposures up to 30 seconds, I believe. And then you've got Reflex, which is their professional uh, kind of photography app. And I've been using that recently to take some macro stuff as well. So there's so much stuff out there. Great stuff. Thank you for sticking with me. If you haven't subscribed, 
you know the score it's just the best way that you can support this channel it's really really good that uh, it's motivating when you see that people are wanting to see your content and they support you that way so that's brilliant it does obviously free as well uh, and give us a thumbs up but uh, these will become common now I'm going to look at doing these maybe not as long as this one but uh, they will be weekly that's the plan now because I just love the interaction there's so many people there Lee I see my friend Lee Churchill's there as well it's just great to see you uh, in the in the chat there and Brian as well lovely note volume is up and down which may move as you away from yeah I get that Brian I've, in fact Brian on that note I've got some more kick coming which will be on here so wherever I go you'll be able to hear me you might regret that but folks thank you thank you so much enjoy the rest of the uh, day the evening the afternoon wherever you are thank you for joining me and uh, I will see you again in a week nice and live be there or be square <laughs>